Hello everyone, my name is Queen Huang Moson. I'm sure most of us have no problem recognizing the brand and logo of Adidas. It is an iconic brand with a long history and deep rooted connection with sports. The broad and diverse portfolio in both sport performance and sport inspired categories ranges from major global sports to regional hybrid sports and local sneaker culture. This made Adidas surpass the competitors and grown into one of the most recognized and iconic sport brands in the world. Since brand positioning is at the heart of marketing strategy, today our focus is brand positioning analysis for this global sport company, Adidas. In addition, we will examine meaningful level of brand equity and strategic recommendation for future developments. First, let's look at Adidas origin and background. The company started by Adi Daschner in Germany. His goal is to make a difference in athletic performance. His elder brother Rudolf joined Adi in 1924 and they registered the company under the name Daschner Brothers Shoe Company, Shoe Factory, sorry, to enhance the quality of spike athletic footwear. Adi changed a previous model of heavy metal spikes to using canvas and rubber. In 1949, following the breakdown in the relationship between the brothers, Adi established Adidas and Rudolf created Puma, which became Adidas' business rival until this day. Adidas has made an impact not only on sports and athletes, but also on fashion, music, culture, sustainability, and beyond. It is the second largest player in the world within apparel and footwear, just after Nike. Adidas Group operates across all regions with its two brands, Adidas and Reebok. Even though Adidas' core business is, a, is in sports, the company has successfully expanded into non-sport categories, taking advantage of the athleisure uh, trend. To analyze Adidas' brand positioning, we first need to understand why and how important it is to position a brand. Positioning means to find an appropriate location in the mind of a group of consumers or market segment so that they think of about the product or service in the right or desired way to maximize potential benefit to the firm. According to Keller, brand positioning starts with establishing a frame of reference, which signals to consumers the way they can expect to achieve by using a brand. This is why a good brand positioning is so crucial to a business. It is a guide to create an effective marketing strategy by clarifying, first, what the brand is all about, Second, how is it unique and how is it similar to competitive brands and why consumers should purchase or use it. To decide on positioning, we need to determine a frame of reference, reference which can be done by identifying the target market and the nature of competition. Next is the optimal point of parity and point of difference of brand association. This is where we pinpoint who is the target consumer is, who is the main competitors are, how the brand is similar, and how is the brand different from them. In other words, we'll be analyzing Adidas brand positioning based on these three questions. First, has the brand established a frame of reference? Second, is the brand leveraging its point of parity? And third, are the points of difference compelling? Has the brand established a frame of reference? To find out, we need to identify a target market and the nature of competition. A target market consists of a market and target market segments. Um, a market is a set of both actual and potential buyers who have necessary interest in, income for, and access to a product. And market segmentation divides the market into two distinct groups, consumers who have similar needs and consumer behavior, and hence quite similar, require similar marketing mixes. Market segmentation requires making trades off between costs and benefits. On the games, Adidas new strategy that guides the brand through to 2025, with the focus on increasing brand credibility, elevating the experience for consumer, and pushing the boundaries in sustainability. Accordingly, we can see that Adidas has put consumers at the heart of their strategy on the game. We can determine the psych psychographic segmentation of Adidas based on how the brand describes its target consumers. We, they strive to live active and healthy lives. They wish to blend sports and lifestyle and they're digital, digital by default, as well as sustainable by conviction. This target market is great to archetype, which means owning to the rapid evolution of sports and sports culture, the key consumer group and influencers that can create brand desirability and momentum. 
The consumer framework comprises of six key quadrants. Male athletes, female athletes, young creators, streetwear hounds, amplifier value, and value consumer, which is, which is not multiply, multiply exclusive. Within this framework, Adidas used well-defined consumer segmentation strategy to win most influential consumers defined as a creator archetype. In terms, of, in terms of behavioral descriptors, they are the people who, true to the brand values, define themselves as work in progress, or doers and makers, first to adopt, focus on what's next, uh, what's new, and what, what's next. Live, play, and work in the world, world most influential and inspirational cities which plays as a key reason for a company city's strategic choice. For demographic segmentation, these consumers are aged 30 to 54, since they are the largest market for athletic shoe stores industry and represent approximately 56.9% of a total industry revenue in 2021. Consumers in this age range are typically employed with a steady stream of income, generally, generally active, and likely to have young children who live at home and thus they are typically responsible for athletic shoe purchases for their children. Competitors. The following graph shows that Adidas' biggest competitors are Nike and Puma. Here are some key factors that we can compare on how well the, how well the biggest sport brands are performing last year. Uh, the US-based company Nike continued to hold the title of the world leading brand in athletic footwear and apparel. It is also seen as the most valuable sport business brand in the world. Nike has a higher, a higher global revenue than both Adidas and Puma put together, with 33.6 billion euros in 2020. Nike key market is North America, since half of its global revenue in 2020 was generated from there, mainly from footwear sales. Most of Nike's success attributed to the brand marketing campaign along with sponsorship agreement and celebrity athletes and um, with celebrity athletes and perform professional sport teams. Meanwhile, Adidas is the largest sportwear manufacturer in Europe and the second largest in the world, just behind Nike, with 19.80 billion euros in annual revenue in 2020. Similar to Nike, footwear is the most important category in Adidas, with over 50% of brand net sales were generated by the footwear category. Puma is also a leading sport brand in the world, with 5.8 5.2 billion euros in annual revenue in 2020. Uh, Europe and the Americas are the most profitable market for, markets for Puma, as this region accounted for nearly 75% of Puma annual revenue in 2020. Puma described itself as the Blue Mountains and has been trying to incorporate more edge, creativity, and uniqueness into the design through collaboration with fashion designers such as Alexander McQueen, Singer Rihanna, and uh, Dua Lipa. Not noticeably, collaboration with celebrities and fashion designers are common strategy amongst these leading sport brands. That way they can maintain the share of the market by broadening their product lines. Next, we can compare how the brand are positioning themselves. Um, with Nike, with their slogan, uh, with the popular slogan, just do it, Nike successfully implemented empowerment, aspiration, and inclusiveness as its top strategy. The brand mission is to bring inspiration and innovation into every athlete in the world. Nike believes that if you have a body, you're an athlete. Puma has a long-term mission to be, of becoming the most desirable sport lifestyle company. Its mission and mantra is forever faster. The brand always aims to be the fastest sport brand in the world. Puma strengthened its position to partnership with some of the most elite athletes, such as Usain Bolt and star footballer, Neymar Jr. In order to connect with young trend-setting audiences, Puma has worked with celebrities with strong culture and fashion influencers such as Cara Delevingne and Dua Lipa. Let's come back to our brand Adidas. Adidas positioned itself as a global company that made an impact not only on sport and athletes but also on fashion, music, culture, sustainability, and beyond. As a result, Adidas is proud to be the sport brand that transcends culture. One of the, and one of the most recognized and iconic on and off the field of play. It is a premium sportwear brand that, that caters to all, from elite pro professional athletes, teams, to any individual who wants to make sport part of their lives. 
expanding footwear, apparel, and accessories and gear. Adidas purpose is through sport. We have a Adidas purpose through sport. We have the power to change lives. Its mission is to be the best sport brand in the world. With attitude, impossible is nothing. Accordingly, the positioning statement for the brand is: Consumers are at the heart of Adidas business. It is the sport brand that strives to expand the limit of human possibilities to celebrate and unite people in sport and to create a more sustainable world. Is the brand leveraging its point of parity or POP? The POPs are not what unique to the brand, but rather what are shared with other brands. There are three types, category, competitive, and co correlation. The point of parity must be met if consumers are to perceive the product of the brand as a legitimate and credible player within that frame. For a global sport company like Adidas, the point of parity are being the world leading designer, marketer, distributor of athletic footwear, apparel, and accessories. Provide innovative products designed to meet consumer needs, high quality products that at reasonable price to target the majority of the market with elite performance and collaboration with celebrities and sponsorship. Some examples of this point of parity can be seen in all three brands Adidas, Nike, and Puma. According to the following graph, Adidas, Nike, and Puma are the three biggest companies that deal with, sport, that deal with sporting equipment in the world. The brand also advertises elite performance products through world famous athletes such as their, um, as their brand ambassadors, proving that the products are extremely innovative and made with advanced technology. Nike main target are basketball players and celebrities as well as famous brand collaboration like Michael Jordan, Drake, Off-White Collection, Nike and Stasi, etc. On the other hand, Puma target runners by having using Bold as a main brand ambassador, as well as Puma Strand and Lifestyle Wear by collaborating, collaborating with famous uh, fashion icons such as Rihanna, Cara Delevingne and Dua Lipa. Adidas is known to mainly target people involved in football and tennis with major market in Europe, European countries while being represented internationally. Some high-profile individuals representing Adidas are football star Tony Cruz, Wendy Reynold, basketball star James Harden, uh, Donovan Mitchell, as well as tennis star Alexander, Alexander Zverev, and Dominic Thiem, just to name a few. In addition, Adidas is also well known for sponsor sponsoring events with global reach, such as FIFA Women World Cup, the Rugby World Cup, Boston and Berlin Marathon, uh, UEFA, UEFA Champion League. This gives Adidas a very strong point of parity compared to its competitors. As a point of difference compelling, as stated by Kala, points of difference, even seemingly contradictory ones, can be very powerful. These points offer strong, favorable, and unique associations that disguise a brand from others in the same frame of reference, reference with uh, which does are fundamental to successful brand positioning. The POD of um, Nike uh, customized product and Nike News, which features the most innovative product as well as a big brand name and celebrity um, collaboration. For example, Converse and Rick Owen collaboration, becoming Nike Club Mass Yacht um, Wear Tester, Ed Jordan B uh, collaborate with Off White Collection. Drake and Nike and etc. This is a strong point of difference for Nike as it creates trends and high engagement between its consumers, both in real life and social media like no other brand. On the other hand, Puma offer brand sport and lifestyle apparel, uh, the two categories are starting to grow less distinct. The brand also specifically target women consumers in terms of building Puma fashion credibility and sport authenticity with the offer where the gym meets the runway. In addition, the brand also has motorsport collection with partner, uh, Puma partnered with BMW and Motorsport since 2012 to create exciting fan wear and street ready collaboration, as well as supplying the team with high performance engineering race wear, gloves, boots, and pre-race team uniform. At this point of difference, I in the brand credibility in both sport and culture. The strategic partnership with Kanye West and Beyonce also considered as the most significant collaboration ever created between Adidas brand and a non-athlete. 
while the collaboration between Adidas original and Pharrell uh, Williams remained highly influential. Lifestyle is the biggest commercial opportunity for Adidas as a brand introduced a new consumer proposition called sportwear. This product are one for sports and uh, are born from sports and one for style. Since banning the use of CF, CFC for all brand production since 1989, Adidas has been a pioneer in sustainability to its global supply chain management, environmental footprint, and community programs. This made Adidas a strong point of has this made Adidas has a strong point of difference compared to its competitors. One of the recent achievements that Adidas made in sustainability was producing more than 11 million pairs of shoes using recycled plastic waste from beaches and coastal regions. This year, the brand also put sustainability as its integral component in its new five-year strategy on the game. Uh, brand equity. So branding remains a sportwear industry leading source of com competitive advantage. And sportwear brands are dedicated to use a distinct and memorable brand identity to win consumer, customers' attention and build brand loyalty. The diagram on the right shows the personality of brand of sportwear brands and their relationship to the brand equity using anchor methodology. As mentioned earlier, Adidas is no stranger to consumers around the world since it is an iconic brand with long history and deep rooted connection with sports. Hence, Anitas embodies all these brand personalities at a high level. Consumers are extremely familiar with Adidas and have a strong positive and personal association with the brand. Does Adidas have a meaningful level of brand equity? To measure, to measure this, a dollar metric measure with five participants was conducted. A price of chosen product was, will be increased gradually, $10 each, each time to determine consumer commitment to Adidas compared to its competitors, Nike and Puma. The chosen, the chosen product is men's classic white sneaker. We have Adidas Stan Smith shoes and Nike Air Force One. Both have similar look, color, style, material, and retail at approximately the same price. Adidas are at 140 Australian dollars and Nike are at 150 Australian dollars. The data show us that although the participants are fans of Stan Smith shoes and Adidas design, they will start to switch to the competitor's product once uh, 20 or more dollars was added to the price tag. Um, the same price, the same, the same primary research was done in comparison with Puma CA Pro Classic that retail at 150 Australian dollars. The participants had higher loyalty to Adidas in this research with 100% of participants choosing Stan Smith shoes over Puma one, even after $20 increase in price and 40 remained loyal to Adidas after $40 increase in price. Evidently, Adidas has a meaningful, has a high and meaningful level of brand equity. Recommendation, there's two recommendations that I would like to add to enhance Adidas future brand developments. First, it started to, is to start expanding shoes and apparel design into other sports to create brand new POD. As Puma has a strong and unique POD in motorsport collection, Adidas can start expanding its shoes and apparel design in other sports such as rock climbing, winter sports to create new POD. My second uh, recommendation is to further push the brand sustainability features on social media with recycle pro recyclable products worn by famous athletes and celebrities. It will increase attractiveness, attractiveness of a product while creating high engagement with, with eco-conscious consumers. Thank you for watching.